Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Friday live stream. So we're going to see how this uh, Wi-Fi actually holds up and kind of go from there. But uh, what we're talking about today is a couple of things. First of all, I don't know if you checked out the presidential debate yesterday, but it was a disaster. And uh, there's some things to actually take in consideration of what happened yesterday in that debate and the things that are moving forward. Also, we'll take a look at uh, the Solana wallet, which there is uh, not a hack, but it's actually been a scam in the Apple App Store. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at banks. So first things first, what we're taking a look at today is yesterday's presidential debate. And uh, I gotta tell you, I, when I tweeted this out yesterday, the question I had for myself was quite simple. And the question was, how is Joe Biden going to actually react as far as mentally? How will Trump answer during the January 6th questions? And will there be Bitcoin and crypto related questions asked moving forward? Now, this is not a, a political channel. We try to stay away from politics as much as possible. Unfortunately, politics are what really does drive certain aspects of the crypto and digital asset space. We don't need politicians. We don't need presidents. We don't need commissioners to actually get on board with us. It is inevitable. However, one thing that is not inevitable is the amount of time frame it takes. So they can actually accelerate this time frame or they can de-accelerate this time frame of mass adoption. So I think it's kind of important who the next president is, just as important as who is the next SEC commissioner moving forward. So I will say this, um, yesterday, there was no questions about crypto and digital assets whatsoever. But if you took a look at, this is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, I'll link this in the description on uh, his X account. He actually answered questions after the first two uh, political members did, Trump and Biden. And he actually answered questions in a way of a, of a third party candidate. And I got to tell you, he is by far the best candidate for cryptological assets. How far will he go? <laughs> it's anybody's guess. But they were fantastic answers that he gave. I really like RFK Jr. And uh, I hope him uh, success. But uh, we'll see how it works out. Again, you can listen to those responses. But there is one thing I'd like to ask everybody and put this in the comment section below, which is if you watched the debates last night, is this the guy that should have his hand on the nuclear button? I'm not sure. Me personally, I wouldn't even allow Joe Biden to be my Uber driver. And uh, that's where we're at. But I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. I want you to watch it. I link the debate in the comment section. You can kind of go from there and see what it actually is. But there are some things to take into account on both sides, which is, first of all, the mooch, uh, Anthony Scaramucci. And he put this post out yesterday or a couple of days ago, and he says, I believe Biden is the right choice for America long term. Has to do with what I know about Trump. Trump is very negative on Bitcoin, which was true. He's done a 180 because he wants your vote. He's done a 180, that's for sure. And he does want your vote. That is very true. And then he says Bitcoin has gone from 17K to 70, 70K in the Biden administration. So just to be clear, uh, that actually did happen. But do we believe that it's the Biden administration that was pushing the narrative of Bitcoin and digital assets to get Bitcoin to 70K? Or do you think it was maybe a little guy named Larry Fink and BlackRock and Fidelity and this ETF that maybe have spurred uh, on this massive appreciation in price for Bitcoin? Uh, me personally, it's a no contest. Biden's administration did absolutely nothing for, for crypto and digital assets. It's just the truth. They've actually been very negative on it. And the only time that they've actually flipped on it was when President Trump actually came out and said that he's going to be pro Bitcoin. Now, I'm not telling you who to vote for. I don't care who you vote for. Again, it's inevitable, but it is a, a big time frame. And if you watch those debates last night, you'll see what I'm talking about. But there was one thing Mooch did say, he, and he agreed with me, which is the debate was brutal. Biden lost the debate. It can cost me election. So we'll see how it all plays out. But you have to understand who is behind some of these candidates. This is Jesse Powell. He's a former CEO of Kraken. I believe he stepped down. Check me in the comments. He just gave a million dollars to Trump. The Winklevoss twins also did. I'm not saying they're great guys. I'm just saying this is who actually donated to him. And I will say that if Trump does pick Vivek as his VP, there's nobody... I think in the presidential race previously, that is more bullish on Bitcoin and crypto and digital assets than Vivek. And I think because he was in Trump's ear, that's why he flipped 180 and gave him good, good information. But uh, not to be outdone, to keep this a little bit balanced, just so you know that uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, who's the global advisor to Coinbase, 
is going to be join, joining Biden's re-election campaign. So uh, there's your balance for you, and you can vote whoever you want to. So what does that mean for crypto assets? Well, I actually put that thumbnail together just like 30 minutes ago, and everything was going pretty good. Now it's kind of sputtering out. So we'll see if it actually maintains, but you can see that the price action is eh, a little bit green here. Avalanche, one of the big winners in the last 24 hours. Chainlink up three, Polkadot, Bitcoin Cash. So not too bad, but let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And uh, that'll take care of the somewhat political side. Let's move into the little PSA side, our public service announcement, Phantom Wallet. So Phantom Wallet, if you have it, it is a wallet for Solana. And I found this interesting. This is from my buddy Alex over at Swissborg. And he says that uh, there is a fake Phantom Wallet not in the Google Play Store, but in the Apple App Store. Usually this doesn't happen with Apple. Usually with Apple, they don't allow these types of scams to get in. Unfortunately, this is there right now, and this guy lost $100,000. So be careful with what you download. Make sure you go to the official links. Make sure you find them on, like what I do is I look for them on their official website, then go to the links that they give me, or I go through X to make sure that they have like, you know, a good amount of, uh, of subscribers and kind of, gauge it from there to find the right uh, links because if i don't then you just have something like this where you lose all your money again it's not how much you make it's how much you keep and that will lead me to some of my last points which is profits unrealized profits are great but realized profits are even better so this was a piece from coindesk and they talked about how uh, whales are selling their bitcoin somebody just moved 61 million i think they were uh, dormant for over seven years somewhere around there and you can see that people take profits and that's just the normal progression of things. There's a couple of really good charts. Blow this out. This is called Coin Days Destroyed. And Coin Days Destroyed is very simple. If you have, let's say one Bitcoin in a wallet and you keep it there for 500 days, that's 500 coin days. And when you move it, that means you, just, that means you destroyed 500 coin days, coin days destroyed. If you have half a Bitcoin, and uh, you had it there for 100 days, that means you have 50 coin days. And if you move it, you destroy 50 coin days. So all this really leads up to is this. The people that hang on to it for a while, you'll see there's a spike before there's a big, long downward ascension or descension. And you can see this happened in, well, just, I just, I'm zooming into to this year, but you can just see that they start to sell these old hands as things kind of take a big turn. So it's something to be aware of. And maybe if you're more of a trader, take a look at this. Again, there's a link in the description for Ben's site in the Cryptoverse. There's also one more you want to take a look at, which is HODL Waves. And HODL Waves is, and what I have turned on is the uh, five to 10 year, four to five and three to four years. And you're gonna see again that these OGs, these people that probably tell you to diamond hands forever, uh, they tend to dump and take profits and then start to accumulate down here. Or excuse me, start to accumulate here and then dump as we get to all time highs. See that? They do it again, they do it again. And right now they're actually just dumped when Bitcoin price was 70,000. So I've talked about this in the sh on the channel. It's rule number five. I have put this on X and Twitter. This was from March 23rd. The other one was from March 31st. And the reason is because you want to have dry powder on the side sometimes. I think it just works out pretty well for everybody. And the, the reason why I didn't have done videos in a couple of days or so is because it's kind of running around uh, doing some things. And one of those things was I uh, got a new property here in Puerto Rico over by Ocean Park. And um, I know everybody says, you know, like how early, how actually some people say we're early, some people say we're late. And some people say, ah, you know, we're winning and everything else. Let me tell you my story about this property that you can see in the background right here. This property, the reason why it took a couple of days to, to go through is because my bank wouldn't transfer it. I have a bank on the mainland and I have a bank over here, mostly because I do all my business transactions here. And my bank on the mainland said, we're not gonna send any of your funds to this other bank because we understand that it's owned by Digital Asset News and that is a crypto company. And uh, we won't send that because we're worried of fraud. So do you know what you're doing? I'm like, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. It's my account. I've moved the damn money. So we had to go through that whole process. So if you think that like we're, we're not early, we're super early. Banks still hate us. And these things still happen. 
and that's what's going on. So look, that concludes today for the live stream. I'm actually surprised that the Wi-Fi held up and we didn't go through anything negative. But uh, now, if you got to take off, take off. I appreciate you coming by. 